two, <laughs> one, zero. Mickey, how you doing, man? Hello, Mickey. How you doing? You good? Yes. Can you still see the dog uh, defecating behind me? Um, not really. You've got the light shining down as if it's like, you know, something from the Holy Lord or something. I can see him coming back. He must be done. Uh, there he is. Yeah. He's a... Uh, oh, so small. Right, dude. How is music? I should introduce you first, I guess. This is Mickey P, very, very distinguished music artist, long in the game. Um, how has music helped you, Mickey? Helped me. Um, it's helped me in a lot of ways. It's, um, I've always found music to be like a good release. You know, that's angry, happy, sad, yeah. whatever you could think of. Um, it's good for socialising. Good for meeting people, yeah. good for getting out. I can't think of, you, you know, it, it's by far more positive than it could be negative. Yeah. Um, do, you remember, do you remember your first ever impulse to make music? I remember listening to music when I was young. Um, probably stuff like Beatles, Guns N' Roses, early stuff. And then, you know, I want to have a go at that. And then I remember sort of saving up. Bought a guitar and just thought that was it. I thought you could just buy a guitar and have a go. And uh, you know, bought the guitar and it probably sat there for about a year before I actually even learned to play it. So that was the beginning. Yeah. What do you remember the first song you learned, or why you learned it? Uh, I think it was probably probably one of the basic ones like Wild Thing. Or I remember I learned the riff to Live and Let Die pretty early doors. Wild yeah. Thing's probably up there, though. Even that shit. Did you learn the A D E version, like A A D E? Uh, yeah. uh, I'm not. I can't even remember. Oh, it was the yeah, the sliding it up. I think it was A and then sliding it up, sliding just slightly the same shape up, or maybe E A and then sliding that up somewhere. I can't even remember it now. If I picked up the time, I wouldn't probably wouldn't even remember it. Okay. Yeah. I'm. I'm. Frankly. Um. Hugely offended and disappointed. You didn't. You didn't uh, double check that. Um, <laughs> dude, can do you think music? From what you've seen and and you've taught music as well, but you've performed it and wrote it here and abroad, here in the UK and you've, in Europe mainly, I guess. Um, is that right? And you mainly in Europe. Yeah, I did a bit in France and that. Yeah. Can you? Can learning a musical instrument help with anxiety from what you've seen in kids or adults? I think so, yeah, I think so, on the strength of it's occupying your mind, I think. I've only ever had anxiety a couple of times. When I speak to people about it, you know, I've always thought that it's trying to, you've got to override it. You've got to find a way to override it, to out, not to outthink right. it, but you've got to find a way that settles it. I think music yeah. is, is a good distraction for stuff, you know, and especially if you're learning something. I mean, you can get lost in just strumming away on the guitar, or if yeah. you're actually trying to learn a piece, you know, you're investing a lot of your mindset into that, isn't it? you know, so I think so. Um, Bit of a Skype freezing there, but that's perfectly normal, once or twice in a call. Oh, there you go, you popped into popped into life. What Sky sometimes does is, is freezes someone and then for about 10 seconds and then they come back to life incredibly quickly like you fast forward and then you sort of see them, see them normally again. Okay, so can it help with depression as well in the same way, do you think? I think so, yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, especially in writing, if you're writing and you've got something you want to get out, it's the same as speaking to someone, you know, if I had a problem and I wanted to call someone yep. to chat about it, I find that, you know, I'll probably write a song about it, probably. I mean, that obviously doesn't work for everybody, but, you know, you could play along to a certain style of music that makes you get that out. It's a release for you, you know? I mean, for me, as I say, if I was in a bad mood, if someone here put me in a bad mood or, you know, I'll just destroy them in the song. It's that simple, really. Right, so basically it's like, talking out loud, but you're expressing it in a, a different way, do you mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely like that. Absolutely. Um, you know, even if it's just playing, it doesn't have to be writing lyrics, it could just be playing a certain a certain tune that lets you get there. 
Yeah. So you, you grew up in Canton Town in East London, right? Yeah. W often with long hair. No, I never dared to have long hair until I was a bit older, mate. You wouldn't have got away with that, mate. Well, I, saw, like, I remember you hearing, hearing stories that you had to defend yourself a few times, and that would be yeah. one of the reasons, you know. Yeah. Um, I think was it difficult? Sorry, go on. No, no, I just think around there, it's like, same as a lot of areas, you know, you got to look the same, otherwise you're completely different. Yeah. yeah. Nobody wants to be that person. But then after a while, you just think, you know, I mean, it's not about judging them people. It's more about thinking, like, I'm going to do what I want to do. People don't like it, then it's their problem, not mine. And then you take whatever comes with it. <coughs> yeah, I, w I wish more people had that attitude. And um, people I've asked on the YouTube, uh, <laughs> the YouTube channel. <laughs> I was watching this Floyd Mayweather interview, like you'll know, in the bo boxer, like yeah, just yeah. people who don't know, like undefeated champion across four, is it four different weight divisions? In, they got yeah, hit yeah. in the face like three times in 20 years, like amazingly fast, uh, defensive, slick, slick boxer. He, it was an interview with him on this podcast recently. I, can, I can't remember the name of it, but I'm sure you'll find it. This uh, um, Floyd Mayweather podcast will we'll surely do it. And he, He's an incredibly, incredibly materialistic and starts every sentence oh, yeah. talking about himself in the third person. But you actually really inspired me. He said, he said a few things like this guy was like, doesn't it bother you what the critics say? What about him calling you out here, him calling you out here? And he's like, I won't do try and even dare do his accent or his mannerisms <laughs> for various reasons. But um, <laughs> he, he was like, listen, Floyd Mayweather worries about what Floyd Mayweather does. Full stop. And I thought, like, oh, yeah. There's, you know, so many people seem to seem to just sit sit back and get bitter and take pot shots and care what other people think. So they're, so they're scared out of saying their truth or uh, something that needs to be said or uh, or whatever. Um, and music, do you think music is good practice for saying what you think? I think so. I think I think it depends. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, music. It's like sometimes you could turn up to a gig. And you see people getting out of their suit. <coughs> Excuse me. You can see people getting out of their suit, ruffling up their hair, trying to make themselves look like they've just crawled out the gutter. You know, and it's like people like that, not for me, but you know, the majority, if you're just yourself, you walk in, you don't have, you know, you don't need to get changed for it unless, you know, I've never gone to a gig and got changed into my stage outfit. I've never ever done that. It's just like you are what you are whether it's on stage or off stage, you know. Obviously, there's a certain, I don't know, there's a certain part of you that comes out when you're on stage, do you know what I mean? I've always thought you don't perform. I don't like the word perform, do you know what I mean? I've never been a performer. You just get up and let it out, do you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. like when you're standing with Floyd, it's like the stage would be your ring, wouldn't it? Do you know what I mean? That's when it comes out. It wouldn't be, you know, yeah. you're not there to and pretend to be somebody else and you know within music there's so many people it's the same as yeah, in yeah. life music there's people trying to pretend to be you know someone that they've seen or they're trying to copy the same movements and that you know it's like it's the same with copying someone's musical song isn't it you know it's like i you know you can tell somebody who's more original than or someone who's just being themselves i suppose is the key word there do you know what i mean <clears throat> excuse me yeah um, London call into the invitation zone. Forget it, brother. You sh you can go it alone. You should go it alone. There's a as Joe Strummer, Joe Strummer put it. Yeah, you're right. There's a lot. There's a lot of um, American singers from the Midlands, and um, <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, but I things like that. that so. People trying, <clears throat> but yeah, like I'd imagine. Um, Met this guy at Lancaster who said he said he sold drugs and he was like, I don't like it because a lot of people come with this like false hard mind attitude. Like uh, they're trying too hard to be. And you do see that on stage sometimes as well. You see it in every walk of life, but it's particularly painful to see when someone's performing. Like, I remember watching a, a boxer, a young young white kid from Sheffield trying to come out like Prince Nassim Hamid, yeah, who yeah, just yeah. Pulled, who pulled it off. You know, like the dancing and he's just like yeah. so graceful and 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 this guy just looks. 
he looked like he'd been given a load of speed and, and um, hadn't used his limbs in a year and was just pushed down the fucking uh... <laughs> But you know, that's the work, it's performing. So you don't go on stage to perform. If you're going on there to perform, you're in the wrong game. It's not about performing I just... like that, like, as if you've got some sort of yeah. dance routine, unless you're one of them shitty little pop acts, you know what I mean? That's going to do that sort of, you know, we've got a dance routine and that's going to, you know, that's our visual. What's the word for it then? If like, if someone Shit. on the stage isn't, if someone's okay, say say like a like a stadium band and they've played the same yeah. song for three thousand times, mm. somewhat so a band who's stayed good and has and has sort of managed to manage to to keep some sort of love for it. Um, what what would you define it if it's not? What would you define it as if it's not? If because I sort of agree you know, with you, but if it's not, um, if it's not performing, or um, I went with my pals. Um, and we went to watch Primal Screen, and yeah, it seemed like the um, so as it was building up to it, I was watching some bits on YouTube and whatnot, and I saw like they'd done the Scream of Delicate tour, and I was thinking, wow, if they're like this, this is going to be amazing. We got there, and I was looking around, and you know, as you do, I'm so I'm looking at the gear, and I'm thinking like, mm, this isn't going to be the big band that they had for Scream of Delicate. They came the out, yeah. That gear, you mean? Just to be, to be absolutely clear about gear, you don't mean fucking class A drugs, you mean the amplification and the drums. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. The drums, like, you know, checking the mic, seeing how many people were actually going to be there. Because for right. Screaming Delicate, they had right. choir, they had the full horn section, they had, like, big band, you know what I mean? And then we watched them at, ooh, what's it called? The Kentish Town Place. Um, and they came out, it was minimal. There was about, I think there's probably five of them, six top whack. And it was just all about the rapport with the audience. Do you know what I mean? I mean, them songs, if you're into them, them songs are classics. Do you know what I mean? And the rapport with the audience and that, it was like they came out, you only had to hear like the first sort of notes. And then it was just like, it's just that party. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's the way to have it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, they can, sometimes they, they can put a whole festival, they could put a whole festival in a song. Is, is it come together? Um, yeah, come we together. Know, music is, yeah. yeah, come together as my one, and I thought like they walked off just before they, they walked off as they finished, and people started leaving. I was like, we're not going yet. I was like, they're not going to leave without playing come together. Do you know what I mean? And they came back on and did kick your rocks off and come together, and I yeah. think country girls and all that. But it's just when that came on, I was there purely for that. I mean, I love loaded as well. You know, like I love all of their stuff, but. For that come together, I was there for that. And it was like, when that went off, it was like, mate, absolute. It's, you know, as good as anything else, do you know what I mean? And, you know, yeah. whether that's playing it yourself or taking drugs or drinking or any party, it was like as good as anything. It was like, oh, high. Yeah, Yeah, um, the thing, uh, Dead Time fell on Mike, the band I used to be in, he, he not anymore. I hope, but he used to be into the baddest of baddest drugs for quite yeah, a long yeah. time. And he had a song called Sonic PCP. And he was like, uh, when the band get in line, there ain't a rush that it's like, uh, I pull a nuclear bomb out of the hat. Is there, is there any fucker that can follow that? <laughs> 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 but I know what you mean. When it's going well, when music is going well in like the writing or the, or the jamming and like rehearsing or, or, or performing, especially like when it, when it just, when you hit that sweet spot, which is impossible to explain, yeah. but um, when you're in a flow state, I guess, uh, it's really, um, it's as good as any psychedelic experience. Like, <laughs> no, all you know? day long, all day long. I mean, I think, especially what you're saying, the writing period, when you're writing, you know, things come out that, it's different. There's so many different ways to write, isn't there? Do you know what I mean? I've been working with yeah. a friend. We've got this little project, and I find it really interesting. It's like, you know, it's like I look forward to when you send me something because when you do something, it's something that I couldn't, it's not in me to do. Do you know what I mean? It's like I look forward to hearing stuff that not surprises me. I don't know what the time, you know, like it's, I, f I really enjoy it because when I hear your stuff, I think, oh, wow, I wish I'd have thought of that or something. You know what I mean? No, like, well, straight up. When I work with my pal, it's like similar. It's like we could be writing, and he'll come up with an idea, even if it's just a vocal melody idea or a line. And I'll be like, right. "Yeah, 
you know, and it's like, that's the thing is like, I think that's what I enjoy most at the minute with music now is like that thing of, you know, if it's like, if you make new music, I look forward to hearing it. There's certain people that I'll look forward to hearing their music. There's certain people that I'll look forward to making music with. And the other way around, there's certain people that I've done, you know, you can exhaust an avenue of certain stuff. I think the thing is with music, you got to keep it moving, aren't you? You know, you can't just sit there and, you know, do the same thing over and over again. It's like, you know, if I said to you, how many songs can you write with just one call? This is, you know, I'm sure you'd be able to manage a few, but it's not endless, is it? No, I suppose it's not. You want to be, it is, I suppose, if you want to be, you know, a, a real artiste, you know. <laughs> I only need one call, darling. <laughs> I only need one call. I've written 10 albums on it. That's what I do. I, I, I had this comedy sketch about this band that um, they considered playing music, selling out and writing songs. All, all they did was like was sell drugs and um, and fuck prostitutes. And they were like, look, this is the end result they're all after anyway. We're just skipping out the, you know, the uh, <laughs> the pretentious middle bit with all the with all the uh, with all the uh, with the art history and the, all the pretentious uh, outfits and the drama. We're just we're just about money and drugs and, and women. And we're not ashamed. To, we're not ashamed to say it. So if you didn't have music as a psychological outlet in your life. What would have happened or could have happened to you, do you think? I don't know what? if I'd have got to that stage. I don't know if I'd have just jumped straight to selling drugs and prostitutes. I can't imagine myself going down that road. Um, you'd need a shave first. <laughs> what? <coughs> you'd need a shave first. A shave? To be a prostitute. I can't imagine you being a pimp. You, you, you'd... You too. I don't, know, decent. Mate, I don't know. You know, if I could, you know, it's all about the outfit, isn't it? If you're going to be a pimp, do you know what I mean? If I could get the right outfit, then maybe, but I doubt it. You know, and as for being the prostitute, I don't think I'd be too keen on that. You know, it depends. Yeah. Remember, there's there's a lot of people who don't get sarcasm in the world, so just just you, it's up to you to, to do a little NB there, but um, we can leave it if you want. <laughs> You know, me, mate, I can really, that's the only way I know, you know. So, a lot of the people you knew growing up who didn't yeah. have music as, as some sort of psychological outlet, as like a mental health vent. What's like the worst position some of them have ended up in, if that's not too morbid of a question? Dead, I'd imagine. Dead. There's plenty of people that are dead from them. Um, no, it's very limited. And I think that's not just where I'm from. I think that's from, like, you know, obviously we're from whatever you want to call it, working class or poor background. So it's like, there's only certain people want to be a footballer. I'm still a middle class. My parents, I, my mum my, my was definitely working class and grew up on a council estate where my grandparents were, but I was, I was middle class. There's no, there's no getting around it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, I didn't, I didn't make it there. I'm still trying to get there. You know, I worked my way there at some point. Um, I'm, yeah, now, I think everybody, everybody would just want to play football. Uh, maybe boxing, um, and you have a, a tiny amount of people would play music. Anybody that played music, I would know them all. Do you know what I mean? There's probably like yeah. seven or eight of us from the area that did. Um, and then after that, as you get older, then it's like people get into selling drugs because they don't really finish school. There's a long, you know, you know, everybody knows the chain. It's like you don't finish school; they want stuff yeah. immediately they've got to have money you got to have money to eat you got to have money to live um and so selling drugs and doing drugs is one of the easiest ways to get it i suppose yeah and get and get you through it the um, for it do you? you know you haven't got to finish an apprenticeship of it you just go out and do it if there's anyone who's feeling who wants to learn an instrument but they're like they're apprehensive or hesitant. What what would you say to them? I'd say go for it. I mean, I think looking around at certain people today, you can see that there's a lot of people around the internet, which is great depending on how you're using it. I think there's positive and negative with everything. Um, yeah. But as far as an instrument, I would say I would just break it down to look. You get more out of playing an instrument than you will out of playing your Xbox or something like that. You know, it's better That's for you. I think, you know, I'll just compare it to that, or it's better than looking at Instagram, do you know what I mean? Yeah, why? Why is it so much better? I agree. But why? I think, 
I just think because it's opening more doors for you. Opening Instagram is just an app, and opening Xbox, you're playing in somebody else's fantasy world, which is fine for a little release, but I think with an instrument, you can make your own, you know, you make your own ways, you can make your own songs, you can open doors for you to bond with other people. And yeah. I think if I was playing, I don't know, some computer game tennis with you, it might be entertaining for a little while, but I'd much sooner sit there and have a jam, do you know what I mean? Having a jam and or writing songs, even if you, we weren't in the same room, I could send you an idea, you could send me something back, it, you know, in this day and age, it's easy. You haven't even got to be in the same room anymore and you can still collaborate and yeah. get off on that. Well, and I think, I can't you imagine you getting off insane. on just watching somebody else doing something because that's all it is. I don't want to do that. You want to do it yourself, yeah. do you know what I mean? Don't be the, don't sit there watching, get involved, don't it? I know people who, they what for hours they watch other people play video games on YouTube. I know that's crazy, isn't it? That's crazy. I can't I just. That's like it's like what the, what's that? It's like Gogglebox or something, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? When people are watching people watching TV, it's like now I'm going to watch you playing a computer game. It's like no, I just I feel for those people. I really do. I do feel for them. It's like. I don't know what they're watching it for because maybe they're watching about to complete a level or saying or I don't know, mate, you know, maybe they're, yeah. I don't know. I can't relate to that. Yeah. I think that's the thing. I can't relate to it. Guys, you get one, whether there's an afterlife or not, in the, on this on this plane, in this world, in this, in your reality, you get you get one shot and time is short and um, you need to do your, what you want to do now. You know, you, it's not, you can't, <laughs> You can't put it off till tomorrow forever. You know, you, you've got to see, no. you, you're never ready for anything. You're always nervous before anything. You've got to just got to, you just got to do it because otherwise it'll, it'll, you'll, you'll just build up this feeling of regret and, and decay and eventually bitterness and, and you'll hate and you'll, you'll grow to resent and hate people who've actually done something. Um, you, you know, you don't want to admit that. You're late. Your mind's worth so much more than that. You know what I mean? You're just shutting it down by by not doing those things, you know? It's like, right. it's the same as being active, and you gotta be active. If if you have a week of being active and you have a week of not being active, you'll certainly notice the difference, and like mentally, you know what I mean? I need yeah. to be active. It's hard at this point with, um, with no gyms and stuff like that, but you don't even need those things, you know? You soon find you can just survive on getting by, but you need that little bit. It's like all of these little things are the releases, you know, like otherwise you're just tiring the mind down and just shutting it down into becoming, you know. I know when I was ill, I was laid up in bed for about nine, ten days. My body with was COVID. Shut down. Yeah. With, with COVID. Mind. Yeah. And my body was just shutting down. And it was like, as soon as I could get back up and that, it was, I felt so weak. And it was like, and that was just like for 10 days. Imagine people that sit and doing this stuff like monotonously. There's people that are consumed by that, especially where people can't really go out at the minute. There's people probably just being consumed by some shit computer game or they could yeah. be anything, like watching TV, watching shit. Do you know what I mean? For me, it's, that, it's always the temptation. Like it's always for some reason. The temptation is always to do the easy thing that is, that's bad for me in the long run. Yeah, of course, of course, because a lot of the things take effort and a lot of things have been designed so that you haven't got to make any effort. The, the good, the, well, what I classify as the good things like learning an instrument, doing some exercise, they all take effort, whereas everything else is just designed so you can just pick it up. Here it is. All you got to do is pick it up and it's there for you and it will do everything else for you. Yeah, yeah. even um, even two clicks, you, it, 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 like we're getting to that point where why isn't yeah. it just one click? Yeah, 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 of course it is, of course it is, of course it is, you know, you can see it when people change, like, this, um, when they update, a, you know, a social media thing or something, you can see people get really upset about it, for whatever reasons, it's like, you know, for me, I just dip my toe in, have a little look, you've got music to promote, you've got music to promote, that's different, um, but other than that, I don't really... I don't care for what somebody's status is. If you've got something going on yeah. that you need to tell me about, you'll tell me direct. I don't need to read about what you're doing on social media. Do you know what I mean? It's bullshit. Yeah. 
I never look, I'm a bit of a hypocrite because I put a lot of stuff out, but thinking of Facebook now, but I'm, I never read the newsfeed ever. Uh, I've told people that, um, but I think it's incredibly, like if, if a lot of people wake up and the first thing they do in like the first 20 seconds of consciousness is flood their life with all the terrible things and all the lies mm -hmm. and all the good or bad lies um, that, that people are putting out there. And it it's like it's like you got ten, it's twenty hurdles for the day, and you just ran face first into the first one, you know. Um, yeah. Especially in the morning, like that, that that kind of thing. Right. Hey, are you on social media? What's your relationship with social media? Um, I will. Do you know what? I, the one I probably like most is Twitter. But then even that, at the minute, there's days when I open that up, read some stuff, and with Twitter, I found that. Uh, if somebody I follow likes something, then that shows up on my feed, and it's like, yeah, it, it mostly is politics or what's going on with this situation at the minute. And I'm not going to get deep on that, but like, for me, I'll see stuff on there, and I just think, oh, and I think, shall I retaliate? Shall I retort? And then I think, mm. well, I have to just hold back sometimes, and I think, no, nah. when it gets like that, just come off. Do you know what I mean? Because I could get involved yes. in bickering with somebody who I don't even know and it's their opinion against my opinion and it's like you know you gotta be smarter than that and you, you know I mean I'd love to spend a day of just going through it and like being a troll whatever they call it I'd love to spend a day being that and just you know but yeah it, it'd, it'd lose it'd lose you know probably for an hour or so it'd be funny for me do you know what I mean and then after that it'd just be like oh no there's other stuff I could be doing. It's boring. I think that's I find, a lot of people doing that, you know. I find it too toxic. Like, <clears throat> even um, I, I look at comments on YouTube, but like nowhere else really. Um, and even that, like, some videos have a lot of comments. Some don't have any, and some have one or two. But it ranges from like, "You saved me," and that yeah. it makes you weak. You know, you but you, you read that and you're like, "Oh my god!" And then you, another one's like, "You know, you're a cunt," or. <laughs> You need to give up, or you're a terrible storyteller, or, or something like that. And you're like, hmm. and and that, and that fucking get if you let and, and you can't help but let it in, and that bounces around for yeah. God knows how long, an hour a day, a week, a month. You know, it's um, your mind. Your mind is like a you are you are what you look at, like you are what you eat. You know, you're like you you are a hundred percent. Your 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 mood and your life is determined by what you focus on. What you yeah, what course, you focus. Sure. You know, hundred um, percent. Like if you write a song, isn't it? It's like if I write a song, if I think that it's, I mean, everybody who makes music's probably got like more unfinished songs than they've got finished songs. You know what I mean? But I think you get to that point where when you think, when you decide it's finished, it's always like I've always said, it's like a photograph, and you know, it's like that's what it's going to be. I'm not going to come back in five years' time and start messing around with it. Just let it go, put it out there. That's what it is, you know. And I think yeah. when you get to that point. You're not doing that, well, if you are doing it to get somebody's appraisal or somebody's credit, then that's not what it's about for me. It's like, you know, when you know it's done, then that's such a great feeling, do you know what I mean? And it's like, don't get me wrong, there's yeah. certain people's opinions I would care for, but at the end of the day, yours is the, you know, like, if it's my song, it's my opinion that matters the most to me, do you know what I mean? If somebody says to me, oh, no, you should have done this, should have done that, it's like, yeah, that's cool, but this is what it is. That's how it is, you know? People are going to yeah, see I, it in a different I, um, Until I've made something, I never ask anyone's opinion on anything, really. Like, I've been there hardly any time. Because it's such a fragile spirit, that, like, that hope and that creativity and the urge to do it, because, you know, there's just an avalanche of, like, indifference or or shit or just um a disappointment that could come your way or it, or it could take off uh it could take off the other way i think you're absolutely right if you're hostage to what anyone else thinks um at all then you you start to doubt yourself and you and you stop putting stuff out yeah, as much. Exactly. that's why i don't why i ask people afterwards i don't like i don't let them i don't let them in um before because like you say like as long as it meets your as long as it meets your um standards then yeah it's good enough yeah exactly because you know? it's you know it's your saying what you want to say with it, isn't it you know it's like you're exactly right i used to 
in the music stuff I've done before, and I used to think, oh, maybe I should compromise a little bit more. But you can't. You can't compromise anything when it comes to that because as soon as you start compromising, you've mm. you're then trying to please somebody. You're then trying to yeah. please somebody else, and it can't be like that. You know, if saying if two people can work together and it works great, then that's cool. But you know, you turn up and then all of a sudden, I don't know, like the bass player or the drummer has decided like that they think it could be this or you know, it's different in a musical arrangement. You might listen for that and you might take that on board when you actually you know. But as far as actually writing the song. When you're trying to, if you're trying to look for, oh, I hope the bass player likes this. It's like you can't be like that, you know. And I've been in them positions, yeah. and you know, I think you know. Obviously, you've got to experience some of these things. It's all right, me saying that, don't ever do that. But you've got to experience it for yourself. For me, experiencing it makes me know that never again. You know what I mean? Never again. Yeah. On the other hand, on the other hand, on the flip side, like if you're convinced, this has happened to me countless times. You write something and you convince it's great. And you play it. You play it to. Um, you're all excited. You've been working on it like three hours a day for a week. And you play it. You play it to the, um, the band you're in, expecting them all come to come to life and turn it into fucking uh, Radiohead or James Brown or something. And they're all. And everyone sort of got their head down and they're like, no one wants to say it, but uh, it would be it would be a fool's errand to carry on with that song. Like, do you know, like if I put out a video and it gets and this has happened before, like ten dislikes in the first few minutes. Um, like I, I know that I should maybe look at that again. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's. I'm not, I'm not relentlessly stubborn with, with this. Like I say, like afterwards I'll think about it. After I've, after I put it out, yeah. or after, or after I've made it, I'll think about it. But I took that down because they got immediately ten dislikes and no likes. So I obviously was, I obviously didn't put out something very good in that, in that case. You know. I know what you're saying, but it works both ways, doesn't it? You don't know where people are coming in. Like, you know, if you walk into that rehearsal room, for example, and you're you're ready to try out some new idea, you don't know what day the rest of them have had. You don't know when they're yes. coming into it. You know what I mean? And it's like getting into something like it might take somebody a year to realise, oh, you know, it's like with bands and stuff with up, you know, like singers, bands and all that. There's people that I would never have listened to as a kid that a few years, you know. You, you know, you get into it later in life sort of thing, you know, like someone like Prince or something. I would never have listened yeah. to Prince when I was a kid because just his look, you know, as I say, where I was from, it was like you, you have to look a certain way and you can't be strutting about how he was strutting about. And that was like, that was just, you know, without even hearing it. How did you have to, how did you have to look where you were growing up? And what, and what was the like, what was the, what I'm you? trying to think of the, Best way to say it, like the sort of eth the ethnic makeup um, of of East, of East London when you were growing up, compared to how it is now. Mixed. Like, I mean, even I don't care. But it was mixed. Um, you know, I have to say there was more British or UK white people than I suppose if you walked into East London now. Um, but I mean, the basic get up would be a pair of Reebok classics tracksuit right. skinner because that was it that's how most people used to dress do you know what i mean well and that so you, you could be you could be a skin color mattered less than the image or in terms yeah, of think, like i think so don't okay. get me wrong there's obviously there was always racist people um um but i don't know i i think when you're young you just sort of see what you see, then you? you don't really see the bigger picture as much, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's, I can look back at it now and see it very differently. Um, but I think at the time when you're young, you're just so in your little zone, it will give you a little tunnel vision that you're just off, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? I've been to the point where I think a lot of people will be worried that they just fit in. Um, they don't want to stand out. They don't want to be that person that, you know, they yeah. don't want to be that person that's getting pulled up or whatever. They just want to be able to ease through without even being noticed. You know what I mean? I suppose. Yeah. And some people have got it the other way around where they've got, they've got, they've got a ridiculous urge to stand out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I've got that, I think. Um, okay. What are the downsides to having a strong impulse to do music and being involved in music and around dysfunctional uh, artists? 
I think. I think. I suppose if you are trying to make a lot of money out of music, it's hard. It's hard. There is money there, but it's shaking the tree and getting it to fall out of it, you know. Um, and then I think a lot of people you will mix with people like you or I. You couldn't have three or four of me and you in the same room. That would be too much. Do you know what I mean? It'd just be too much. You'd it'd just be like your emotions would just be shattered. Do you know what I mean? And it would be like just a full on ordeal yeah. every day. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. It's nice when you meet somebody that you can relate to. Um, yeah. I think it's the same as living with someone, isn't it? You know, it's the same. With, you know, I could love you at pieces, but can we live together? I don't know. Do you know what I mean? I lived with the yeah. band for a little while, and I remember when we left that place, I don't think we spoke for ages, you know, and that was just day-to-day -day living, you know, which you should think would yeah. be easy if we have all, you know, invested and got love for each other, whereas, yeah, I think, you know, I've seen a lot of people come into rooms doing music or even just doing shows and seeing people backstage or whatever and, you know, I'm more depressed than you are. So, well, sorry to hear that, mate, you know. Song title. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's hard, isn't it, you know, because everybody's letting it out in their own way, I think. I always look at it as, right, I would never want to be that guy on the side of a football pitch screaming at his kid, do it this way, do it this way. Do you know what I mean? Just You just got to do, what, do what's good for you, and you know. You know? I yeah I agree. Who's who's the worst singer of all time? Oh, I don't know, mate. I mean, it's, I could roll off loads. I'd imagine. I prefer to look at you know. Is for me, I would say stuff like this. Like for me, Marvin is like. I think there's nobody better. I'm not saying he's okay, the best, best, but I would say I'm not saying he's the best. But I'd say that there's nobody better. You know. My drummer used to say to me all the time, like, you're always obsessed with who's better and who's worse and who's shit and who's good. And so I stopped yeah. looking at it like that and I sort of mixed it up into thinking, well, right, you know, Marvin Gaye to me is as good as it gets. You know, to other people, yeah. they probably think someone better. But to me, I just think that that's, if I could be anywhere near that, I'd be, you know, I could die right now, mate, and be delighted, you know. For anyone, um, probably... Probably everyone of any age has probably heard the name Marvin Gaye, but heard it through the Great Vine was a big one of his. What? What else? What other tunes? Do... Um, he's got range, and he's got sexual feeling. Uh, sexual healing. He's got um, Trouble Man, Inner City, Inner City Blues. Got to give it up. There's a few, yeah. and he's got different ranges. He's got like the real easy listening pop, if you want to call it that, or he's got the deep sort of soul-y sort of stuff with political meaning or he's just got straight out disco party tunes he's like you know he can cater for all of us mate it can be and disco he's... stew or socrates <laughs> i'm thinking i'm trying to think if i was going to say worst singer i'm going to have to throw bob dylan under the bus mate you know he's going to have to go i'd 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 agree on the albums on the um, deliberately shit albums that he made to stop um, thousands, thousands of people going to his house, like Under the Red Sky, which is a ter which is a terrible album and deliberately so. Then yeah, but like, I don't know, man. Like people who say that, listen to the forty albums and come back to me is all I say because he sounds different on each one, basically, like a different yeah, person. I'm sometimes songs are very soulful as well. Sometimes I think it depends on you know. It's like, I'm just saying that really for me, it's like he gets his message across and I think that's what it's about, mate, do you know what I mean? I mean, I'm not, yeah. you know, when I'm singing my songs, I'm not Mariah Carey, I can't hit every octave or do all that sort of shit, do you know what I mean? So who the fuck am I to say anything like that? But I just think it, he gets his, in the strong songs and I think it's, it's, it's more about the songs and it? it's more about your body of work than... You know, yeah. would anybody ever say he's one of the best guitarists? Probably not, but, you know. Mm, I would. Again, like, listen, anyone out there, listen to Don't Think Twice, It's All Right. He was like 19, 20. That's... Oh, mate, he's, I, right, I, because I, he's, I, he's still, written them on that. You know what I mean? He's written them on that. And it's like nobody would, you know, he did it. So it's like you can't take that from him. It's like I would much sooner see... I'm about songs. I'd much sooner listen to the songs than I would 
someone, you know, you know, when we used to work together, we'd go to those little meetings. And I can remember that fella standing up when you had to sort of introduce yourself and he introduced himself. I wouldn't say his name, but he introduced himself as like, yeah, I'm a jazz pianist. And it was like, just went straight into the bullshit. It's like, geez, no one cares. No one cares about that. We want to get out of this meeting and get out of here as soon as possible so we can get back to our own thing. I know who you mean. He actually, have you seen Stranger Things? <laughs> no. All right. He, he looks a bit like the baddie with the white hair in, um, in Stranger Things. That's <laughs> how so you do know who I mean then, didn't you? <laughs> I right, Vicky. Know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, his heart was in the right place, but his his actions and his and his words weren't. Um, is that Jimmy Carr joke about um, Ed Miliband? He said, "Bless Ed Miliband. His um his heart was in the right place, but his nose wasn't." <laughs> brutal. That's brutal. What What's the most positive impact you've seen learning to play an instrument have on one on a person on, on a, a kid or an adult mm. i think from a friend's point of view i've had friends that were like really really you know grew up and i thought oh you know they're only going to go this way and i never thought music could be for them then i watched them get into music and it completely consumed their life you know took over and they've had good things out of it done a lot of tours um, been really proactive with it, been busy, got a lot of recognition, and that's their life, which is great. I think with teaching somebody, I think whenever I would teach, normally in schools, I would always be, for whatever reason, I'd always end up with cheeky or all the naughty kids, do you know what I mean? And yeah. there's, a, there's a real good feeling of, obviously, a teacher is, not all teachers are like this, but a certain teacher is probably rip them off already because they're having to deal with them all day every day and they're probably too much and then you yes. get them for a little period each week and then they become like the best one at it in the class or whatever you know not about yeah. being the best i suppose like you know being able to pick it up and being good at it to the point where one of their teachers or one of the people around them even if it's when they go home and they're able to sit there and show like i did this and i can do that and then afterwards, they'll be coming to you and saying to you, I've learned this now, look at this, do you know this? And it's like, oh, yeah, you know, cheers, mate. And they'll be going home and you've just set them on, to, you've just given them like the basic tools to start their little journey, do you know what I mean? That's what uh, I've always thought of, like, just um, they've got their journey planned out already. They don't know what it is, you don't know what it is, but you just give, you just give them a little bit of encouragement in the right direction. And they'll go 10 times more productively, 10 times more happily, um, ten times more effectively into learning the instrument than you sitting them down and, and, and forcing them to learn like Mozart when they're six. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And putting them off it for life, which is what happens with a lot of teachers because they're boring fuckers who don't don't have a sense of humour and, and and just and can't think outside the box and, and bore bore our young people to death and breed our future um future I was gonna say accountants, but that would be too uh, too mean. <laughs> No, you know Can what you're saying. You bang on, absolutely. All right, that's that's. I wish people said it more often. Okay, so what? What's the? What's the most profoundly positive impact live music has had on you? Um, playing it or watching it? Is, is there a, a memory that leapt to mind there? Primal Screen does straight away. I remember like Primal at screen. that Primal Screen was like just real real like just like a proper buzz you know what i mean it's like a real treat a real real treat um playing it i suppose when you're playing it uh, i suppose for me doing the funk stuff being able to look out and see that people are just off you know people just dancing okay. and having it or turning up at venues when you know that they don't really know you and they're just there for the music and they're there to try and have a good time and then if they get off on your tunes then that's that's cool isn't it you know and they've been disappointed so often and it's a yeah. relief when someone half when someone half decent well more than half decent in your case but when someone comes on or, or a group come on that can um actually play uh it's even more it's even it's even better experience on the on the sort of i don't know I don't, like not amateur circuit but like 
No, I small, get small, smaller venues. Um, There's so some that stand out. I believe <laughs> it stands out a lot. Yeah. Right. Some, um, that stand out and some that you just wouldn't ever. There's some that are just not memorable, wouldn't there? You know. Yeah, but I remember my friend said. Um, well, actually, Jesus said it as well. But Jesus was like, "Come to me if you're hot or cold, but if you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out." But it maybe sound made it sound less euphemistic than that, but basically was saying like, you know, and my friend, my friend Sean, who's I've never known anyone as into music as he is. He, he's a he's a mathematician and by by trade, and and he's actually an infectious disease specialist, a very esteemed one. But he's man, he's, he's an encyclopedia of music. He, he, he came up to me once at a gig and he was like, look, a band should be great or shit and there should be no equipment left at the end. And he walked off. Yeah, yeah. It, but his point that's was... That's like, a worthy, a worthy quote, isn't it, you know? His point was... <laughs> I think it's better to be awful than mediocre. Seriously, like, in music. Yeah, I mean, I just... I wouldn't do it, you know what I mean? I swear. <laughs> I'd give up, mate. <laughs> I wouldn't do it, but I, I don't know. You yeah, know, I've seen so many, so many yeah. that just stand there thinking, like, really? You carry gear at the car for this. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Fuck you put the gear up your nose for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got changed. You got changed after work for this. All right, dude. I'm. I'm um. I need I need to get off soon, but it's it's been great talking to you about yeah. music and, and, and creativity and, and mental health and um where's the best place people can hear Mickey P because people should hear it that's for sure. Um, I suppose do you know what? I've took a lot a lot off of online. I've got stuff that's going to come out with my little project, The Lost Boys. I will send you the link to that if you can add it to this video. Yeah, um, yeah. But it'll probably be on SoundCloud first of all. Um, there's a couple of bits you can hear on that, and then, as I say, there will be stuff dropping pretty soon. To be fair, we're just at that stage where just putting the little polish on it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, the um, the happy ending. So, <laughs> at the minute, should people search for Mickey P, or is the Lost Boys out? The Lost Boys is out publicly now. There's stuff that, right? that you can hear on both. There is stuff that you can hear on both um, SoundClouds. I will just send you the uh, links, and then if you can add them at the bottom of the video, then that's cool. All right, man. Well, Mickey, it's been, it's been a pleasure as always. Thanks thanks so much for your time. Neither of us are getting paid for this, so uh, everyone should be very grateful. <laughs> that's fine, bro. All right, mate. I'm going to take about five seconds to stop recording, but I'll just, I'll just keep...